Welcome back class. This video is going to show you how to draw your final portrait using the box grid method. At this point, you should have already watched the how to draw a grid on your paper video and you should have a grid over your photograph, your original selfie, and your piece of paper. At all times, and I repeat, at all times you want both of those in front of you, you are constantly going to be looking at your photo and your paper. Uh, the general note, a general requirement is every two to three seconds you should be looking at your paper back to your grid. It should be a constant back and forth. If you're just staring at your grid, not looking back at your photo, you're going to be doing it wrong because you're going to be guessing. And if you're guessing on your grid, it's going to be wrong every time. So make sure you have that constant back and forth. Um, uh, you're basically looking back and forth uh, between each piece of paper as you do this. All right, so to begin, again, I'm doing this graphically. You're doing it on your paper. Please do not do this digitally. Here you have my my picture that I, um, myself, that I took showing the mood of me just being goofy uh, and then my grid. And just a general requirement, I am going to show you step by step how to do this. But what I would advise first, what I would heavily advise, is work on drawing the silhouette, basically the, the outline of your your body, of your likeness, because it it helps build your confidence. It helps you um, really understand the basics of the grid method. And it also frames everything else in uh, to help make it easier. So just like the, the box grid helps you look at one thing at a time, you should be literally boxing it in from the outside in uh, to make it easier for you. So I would start with the silhouette first. And then lastly, the facial deta details when you are done that. So I'm not just going to end the video here. I'm going to show you um, how I did that or what the steps are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in. And I'm sorry if this makes you dizzy here. Um, this is the best way I can think to do this for Schoology to show you. I am going to switch my color to red. And I'm going to start, like I said, start with your the outside. I'm going to start over here at the bottom left. If I can start drawing here. There you go. So at the bottom left here, I'm going to start drawing my sleeve. And I can see that sleeve is in row 11, column A. So I'm in A11. So A11 exists right here in this box. So I am just looking in that box. Instead of being overwhelmed by all the details, I'm just taking it line by line, box by box, and then seeing how it all turns out. So I'm going to zoom in even more. And I can see that if I outline this box in red, that the sleeve is coming right through the corner and is coming down about halfway uh, into the bottom of the square. So these are called tick marks. These help with the measurements so you know where the line begins and ends. So on my paper, I can make a light mark. And you just, even though we're drawing our final portrait, we're not drawing our grid anymore, you still want to continue to draw lightly because you, I'm sure, are going to make mistakes and need to erase. You want to wait till the end to make your lines darker and more or, and cleaner. Once you have those lines, you can then connect them. So my stylus is not working on that great. Now the row continues over into B10. So you can see my line continues up there. Now I see that that doesn't quite hit the corner on the left here. It hits about here. And I'm going to kind of jump forward the next box. My line hits right in the middle of 9B. And making these marks is extremely important as you move forward. Once you kind of get the idea, let me do one more here. So over between 8, B, and C, I have my shoulder between 8, B, and C right here. And once you get the hang of that, you should eventually just start connecting them, you know, make any line changes and angles that are needed. But at least you know where your line begins and ends. Now I'm moving into 7, C. And obviously, you are not drawing my portrait with me, so please, if you're doing that, please stop. <laughs> you are drawing your portrait using your grid and your photo. I am just demonstrating how to use the grid uh, step by step. So I am going to draw my neck here. I want to try to focus on just, again, the silhouette, the outline. Sorry, guys, my stylus is, is acting up, so this is not going to be my best, best work here. Seems to work best when I'm not picking up my stylus. Oh, so I made my lines, because I was having issues with my stylus here, I made my lines way, way too far up because the top of my head actually hits in 2D. 
It shows that even Mr. Gallock makes mistakes. We all make mistakes. That's how we learn. But it's important to note in art that a lot of times artists are afraid to make mistakes. They want it to be perfect right off the bat. But we need to remember that art is a process, not an instant final result. We need to get through the steps. So I'm drawing my hairline there. My hairline is receding. I am missing my hairline in old age. You guys have something to look forward to when you get old. But I am essentially using the grid here. And for some reason, my grid seems slightly squished. I don't know. Oh, here we go. That's why. Because that was my neck, not the bottom of my chin. All right, so that's me essentially creating my the outline of myself for my portrait. And then, obviously, the last step would be to uh, draw the eyes in uh, in the in, inside facial details. But again, just look at it box by box. So if my eye here is in 4E, I want to look at 4E, A, B, C, D, E. See, I still sing the alphabet. Anyway, um, so I'm going to look at that eye, and I want to draw that eye. I see that it's in the middle. The top part of my eye kind of hits near the top of the grid. I'm trying to draw my eye where I see it in as much detail as I can. And then I see my nose is further down here. My nose comes up to about here. So that is not the best. I think um, my drawing is a little off. Again, my stylist is having issues. But the bottom line is to go box by box so that your, your portrait will look as much like the original as possible. So if I hide that there, bring back my outline, and um, yours should essentially look like this. Once you are done drawing your portrait, you can erase it. You do not need to... Sorry, I'm going to grab another stylus while I'm talking. You do not need to draw the background of your photo. So if your photo was in the art room and you have some poster behind you or you have some artworks behind you, you don't need to draw it. If it was in your room in front of your bookshelf, you do not need to draw it. You only need to use the grid to draw the background if that's what you actually want. Uh, please do not feel like you have to draw the background. I'm only concerned with you, your likeness itself. And then once I, you have that, you then erase the grid and all that's left is your actual photo. So if this were my final, so I have to unhide this real quick. Where are you? Why is it? Sorry guys, if this were my final and I did this on my paper, let me undo this real quick. Apparently I have to merge these two. Sorry about that, guys. Merge with below. Here we go. So this is my final. Yours essentially would look something like this. And let me rotate my paper. Meh. So yours would look something like that. And then you would just draw in a background that would represent you. So, you know, me being the art teacher, maybe I'd want to draw something art related. Maybe I'd want to draw a large paintbrush. To help kind of show me, maybe you got some paint over here, maybe a, a big art palette coming off the paper. And with your background, I would really advise drawing large in size so that you can, A, detail it easily. It fills up the space of your paper quickly. And I lost my train of thought, but essentially just draw large so it fills the paper. And maybe just have I can just do simple repeat simple design elements like paint dripping, and this can be uh, my portrait. Oops, for my project as I'm drawing on my face. And then once you have that, the last step is just to color it. That video will come um, in during the next class, but that essentially is how you draw your portrait box by box using the box grid. The last thing that I want to add, uh, so please don't stop the video now. I'm going to hide this here, and I am going to, on a new layer, I also want to demonstrate how to draw eyes, nose, and mouths, because you want to be looking very closely at your photo, and be very careful not to do the following. I call this my Cyclops drawing, 
where I draw the eyes, nose, and mouth, it looks like Cyclops, you'll see in a minute. So typically with the eyes, you see a lot of this. I'll see a lot of students draw their eye and a dot. Please don't do that. Please try not to do this either for your nose. You can see it's already becoming Cyclops. And please just don't give me that smiley face like that. The right way to draw an eye, nose, and mouth is you want to focus on something in art called broken lines, where not all lines connect. Lines are meant to basically imply form or to show uh, three-dimensionality without actually connecting. So, for example, my eye specifically, if I'm looking at my eye, I'm pretty sure my eye does something like this. My top shape of my eye is like that. And then the bottom of my eye curves. And then I can draw the colored part of my eye. I believe it's the iris. Then my pupil. Usually like a little reflection or something. Color that in black. You can draw the bottom eyelid and notice how that's not connecting to anything. It's more just implying the shape. So that is more of a realistic eye. And then, of course, if you have any eyelashes and things, you know, you can add those on top. Try to just be careful not to over-exaggerate the eyelashes, um, make them too long or basically too long. And then the nose, instead of connecting on the lines together, if I were to draw the side nostrils and then the nostrils at the bottom and then draw the bridge in the nose, you can already see how much more realistic that looks than um, the, the nose to the left where everything connects. You want to, again, have those broken lines where everything is um, spaced differently. And everyone's eyes, nose, and mouth are different shapes and thicknesses. So make sure you're paying attention. You know, do you have a... I don't know why my stylus isn't working very good today. Do you have a thinner nose where your nostrils aren't so wide? Right? Everyone's nose is different. Um, some noses are also shorter where the lines don't go up as high and the eyes are the eyes are more over here or your nose is longer and your eyes are up here. Again, that all depends. Um, so pay very close attention to the box grid. And then lastly with the mouth, just the mouth is a series of three lines. You're always going to have your top mountain peaks, is what I call them, the top lip line of your lip. You'll have the bottom line of your lip, and then the line in the middle where the top lip meets with the bottom lip. So these are more realistic ways of drawing the eyes, nose, and mouth. And just like I mentioned with the eyes and nose, the mouth has different shapes that relate to you as a person, as an individual. So if I were looking at my portrait, I realized I had a thin Maybe you have a thin upper lip. Notice how I'm drawing the spacing much shorter. And maybe your bottom lip is thin too. But maybe your bottom lip is actually larger and you have a thin top lip. Maybe you have a thicker top lip and a smaller bottom lip. Everyone's mouth is different. So are your eyes and nose. So make sure you're catching those features um, as realistically as possible. And I'm hoping that this video helped demonstrate how to draw your grid in perfect proportion or how to draw your portrait in perfect proportion using the grid please make sure to rewatch this video or pause it rewind it as many times as you need uh, so you can understand how to complete the project and the next video i'm going to demonstrate how to add color in the next class all right guys thank you for watching and i look forward to seeing your your final projects your final drawings and i will see you later in class all right bye guys